Let's have a look at those three dots moving through space. It appears as if an equilateral triangle rolls in this plane. And indeed, in case we place a circle in the plane, we find a triangle within this circle. What's interesting though, those dots do not move along some curved lines, they run straight. Once we label the axis, we see those dots are voltages. Because those voltages change between a max value and a min value, they must be alternating voltages. Let's check the actual values of those voltages with these voltmeters. Again, we notice the voltmeters alternate between a max value, indicated red on the scale, and min value, shown in blue. It's not difficult to guess that the voltages are signs. They are three 120-degree phase-shifted grid voltages of a three-phase voltage system. Now, it is getting interesting. Even though voltage is not a vector quantity, and therefore doesn't have a direction, we still can assign a place to a voltage dot in space along one of the three 120-degree axis. If we add those three voltages now located in space, we get the voltage space vector. So, the voltage vector is nothing more than the vector addition of the red, blue and green dot. Even though the three voltages incessantly change their value, the sum of them is a constant quantity. The constant voltage vector moves only through space, not through time. We are dealing with a virtual DC voltage here. What is even more intriguing, we can integrate this voltage vector and get the magnetic flux. Of course, we have to do it separately, one of the three voltages at a time, and add up the three fluxes to one flux vector of constant length. On a side note, that is what happens in physical reality anyway, because there is no voltage space vector in the first place. It is only there because the back translation from the rotating flux vector generates voltage. If the three phase voltages were connected to resistors or capacitors, we would have come nowhere near a rotating voltage vector. Finally, we have to understand that the flux vector does not start somewhere in the middle of the machine. Flux lines are closed loops and run through the entire machine. And the interesting part of the flux is, of course, the part between the coils that creates the shown finite flux vector. Now, we place an observer on this flux vector. That is, for example, the visitor of a beer tent at the Oktoberfest, who usually should not recognize the Earth is rotating. If he does, though, it certainly is not related to Earth rotation. Anyway, our observer looks at constant magnetic flux, and in no way he would find out that he rotates through space together with the vector he is standing on. This rotating magnetic field that we of course can see if looking from the outside of the machine but is stationary when looked from the inside, is the foundation of all our three-phase electric machines.